Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back. We're streaming live from our studios of ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Andrea Kaplan, but everyone calls her Andy. Andy is Hawaii's Mrs. Hawaii, America's United States reigning queen. A mother, a wife of a Navy SEAL, and a community servant. Let's welcome Andy Kaplan. Hi, Hi, aloha. Aloha. Boy, look at how beautiful you look. Beautiful and radiant. <laughs> no wonder you have yeah. this story to tell us about today. That I won't, <laughs> yeah, that you got that crown and you're, you're going to be representing Hawaii. I'm so excited to hear your journey. Thank so, you. So as we get started, Andy, share a little bit about yourself and your family, please. Sure. So um, I'm currently Mrs. Hawaii's America's United States. I am married to a retired Navy SEAL. And we have a son, Austin, who's 23. Um, we have a small family, but a mighty family. I'm just really proud of my family so much. My son, Austin, who you see in, in that slide that just popped up, um, he's 23 years old and he just came back um, from a missions trip serving in Argentina and Brazil. So we are very strong Christians and in our faith. And so he decided to take the leap of faith and to go with YM and spend six months um, doing mission work. So he's back now and he's going to school to be a firefighter at HCC. And my husband, um, who just recently retired, um, he um, opened up Trident Adventures. He owns that, which is a scuba adventure company. So he took the fun parts of being a Navy SEAL and he made a company out of it so everybody can experience something off their bucket list or an extreme adventure and have a great time while doing it. And we got two adorable poodles and a horse freedom. But I guess since I'm the only one that rides horses, that horse would just be my horse. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an exciting and venturesome life that you lead. And one day I would love to talk to Austin and maybe we can get him on the show uh, to share from a young man's point of view, the mission field in those countries. I'm, he must have some incredible stories. I can't wait to see his stories and he would love to do that. I would love to have him on. So please connect me up, okay? And I will. His journey on because I love missions work and in those countries, life changing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would love that to. That was life changing for them and it was life changing for him as well. Yes, so powerful. So let's carry on. You were recently crowned Mrs. Hawaii, America's United States. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick that system? And what does having the title of Mrs. Hawaii America's United States mean to you? So this pageant system kind of just found me. There's so many pageant systems out there and all of them are absolutely incredible. And having a pageant system that is platform based was so pivotal to me because I started um, a foundation called Operation Hero to Heroes, which is what my platform centers around, which is veterans and their caregivers to provide care and resources to them. So with the platform and the five pearls of wisdom that this pageant represents, which is to encourage your other sisters by leading, to be personable, to be a role model, those are all characteristics that I, you know, have and that I think that, you know, that we see so many days, you know, that on the news that are just, you know, lacking, just being kind to everybody, encouraging one another. So with this crown, I treat this crown as a doorstop to get me in to the doors that I need to get in to make a difference for our veterans and for our caregivers. It's not about putting on this crown and having the opportunities that are being presented to me. It's about giving those veterans and those caregivers the opportunities that they're really entitled to, but they've been lacking for so long. And to be able to shine that light, to be a light of encouragement and a source for these individuals that have given up so much of themselves so selflessly for so many years. Well, you picked the right pageant, um, being platform driven. That's incredible. And um, as I was sharing with you earlier, um, having a, going through a pageant as a missus, I think it's a lot more, <clears throat> excuse me, rewarding. And uh, because you have life experiences behind you that you can share and passions that you can already um, utilize in your platform or, or that you are utilizing in your platform. So it comes out with even more of a passionate heart and I can hear it in you. So I'm so excited 
And I just wanted to ask you, is this, you know, you're married and you have a child and, you know, your, your pageant days um, are done, but now we have the missus. So huh? is this your first pageant that you've ever run in? Yes. <laughs> wow. So I never grew up um, doing pageants at all. And I never thought about doing pageants because it kind of goes back to what you're saying as we're younger, we really don't know who we are, what our identity is. Some people are probably lucky and they, they know that. I didn't, I was more worried about what other people thought of me than I was more about what I thought of me and what God thought of me. So when COVID hit in 2020, I decided, well, this is gonna be, now's the time to start doing things that I was always afraid of doing that I always thought that I couldn't do. So I entered a pageant and I, that's when I started riding horses actually too and started training for my first rodeo. Wow, that's exciting. Um, so, you know, COVID, it was a dark time in many people's lives, but you always have to look at the silver lining and for you redeveloping or emerging yourself as um, or maxing out who God created you to be, I think would be the most uh, valuable gift that you got out of that period, the last two years. So. God bless you and touche to you for being able to realize that. So, you know, Vina, that was your first pageant. And, you know, <clears throat> I've done pageants for the last 25 years. Oh, so wow. I have a lot of experience with you, the young ladies, and um, just trying to mentor you. And, and then, like, for you, you, you probably didn't need anyone to be there with you because you um, probably are a mentor to so many. So it was pretty much, I think, an easy journey for yourself. But I want to ask you, what was the most challenging segment of your passion? That would be to put fear aside. Because like I said, you know, going through growing up for so many years, I grew up in fear, which isn't healthy because it creates a lot of stress on you. And just knowing that I felt that I was called to do this and that God called me here for a purpose, I really had to put that in the, the front of my mind and, and nothing else. Because there was a lot of people saying, well, why are you doing this? Why, you know, they, they see pageants more as a negative thing, as a, a beauty pageant versus, you know, you're going up there, you're being judged by your interview and your platform for what you want to do to make a difference. Not necessarily how you look, how you're dressed or what you're, how much you spent for your designer dress. It's, so putting that was the most challenging, I think, aspect of me was to put the voices aside of all the naysayers that were out there and just to just focus on my why and why I was doing this and why that was going to make a difference. Wow. And again, congratulations for being able to tune out all the negativity. And like we have to do that in life so many times. And we know that God chose you to run. And, you know, um, that was my role for the last 25 years is that when a gal wants to run, my role in her, her journey is to max her out of who God created her to be and try to develop in an earlier stage of her life and also to give him all the glory. Once they're putting that second crown on her head, give him all the glory even before giving mommy and daddy that mahalo mom and dad, you give all the glory to him. So, and then also you being the door stopper, uh, of course, that opens every door with this crown, believe it or not, it does. And um, you get a little bit more attention and then, then you can penetrate into the hearts of the other young ladies, the young girls, and all the other wives who may have been struggling with many different uh, issues. But now because who you are and what you achieve, your the door is open and they feel very mm, safe to talk with you. It's amazing what that crown represents. And if you take it in that content, you've done a great job. You're going to do a great job. And it's, it's just beginning. So would you recommend other wives to enter this pageant? Absolutely, I, I, I would. And I've actually been encouraging my friends to join and to enter. And a lot of them, you know, they're, they're shy because like I said, they have this stigma of what pageants are all about. And I think if they were just to put that aside and realize that you're already crowned with purpose, yes. just your second crown that's going to be going Not on your that you can do anything. And when you get out on that stage, people are going to see the light and what you have to offer. And it's amazing just what that can do, even to some, you know, women and wives, you know, that are 
you know, struggling or they're stressed or they're trying to figure out, you know, who they are and to get that confidence in what their purpose is, what a pageant can actually do to just give them that extra step mm -hmm. to figuring out, you know, their why. Wow. So it's so powerful. I'm so excited that you were chosen. He chose the right one and uh, you have a big mission on your hands and I know that you will not let him down and that you'll fulfill every bit of what your purpose is for. So I'm so excited that I got to meet you and, and hear yeah. your heart on this and just it just warms my heart. So I'm excited. So you've already touched me. So Aww, <laughs> maybe thank I should run too. No, no. You should. <laughs> but my, yeah. So anyway, we'll carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Your husband, Steve, is a, a retired Navy SEAL. Yes. I, yeah, wow. I imagine that you have seen him go through many challenges. What was that like? And how did you get through the daily stresses of deployments and managing a family and a career while he was gone? And I'm sure he must have endured some injuries at some point, maybe not. But would you share all that with us, Steve? Yeah, so Steve is a great man of faith, um, too. So we knew that if our foundation was strong and rooted in God, that we would be able to get through anything. Because being a military spouse, let alone a SEAL spouse, it comes with a lot of challenges. They're deployed, they go through a training school, workups, and so they're gone constantly. So there was times, a period where there was one year I saw him one weekend out the whole year. So us just having the faith and knowing, you know, what our vows meant to us is what got us through the day to day. So when I didn't get the phone calls, when he was deployed and he didn't know where he was at when he was coming back, I knew and I trusted that God had us in the palm of his hands and our marriage in his hand and that God called him to do this. He was going to keep him safe and his story is probably one of the most beautiful, amazing stories of why he became a SEAL. And I'll have to share that with you on another day when we have more time. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, I've been a group fitness instructor for gosh, 20 years now. So what I would do like each and every time is I would give myself um, goals. So I would teach classes and I would give myself an educational goal. I ended up getting three master's degrees in the course of the time that he was gone because that was my way to stay focused. And, you know, so I wasn't constantly worrying about him and he's been blowing up a lot. There's times where we would get those phone calls and he would be in the hospital and we didn't know, even when we were out here, they, the SEAL Foundation actually flew us out because it was pretty bad. We didn't know if he was gonna be alive when we got to the hospital, when we got off that plane. So. There's been a lot of that and God's really just challenged and, you know, stretched, I guess, the limits, you know, of like our marriage, you know, going through the ups and the downs, you know, for better, for worse, for sickness and in health, you know, we have been, you know, through it all. But what got me through that and managing it was my son was very active and he was in sports. We would, you know, I would make sure that my health and my nutrition was always, you know, first and foremost, making sure that I was exercising, making sure that I was involved in the community. The SEALs have a huge support group. We have um, the Wives Club is amazing. The SEAL Foundation does a great job to provide resources for the deployed um, service members and their spouses. Even when we come back, we do a lot of um, family retreats um, together. So to get through that was a lot of a prayer. It was a lot of faith and it was a lot of just making sure that I put, you know, but taking care of myself, you know, through health and through fitness as well. Wow. I'm hoping that this, um, this thing that Kauai show can reach more wives that, um, and, and for sure, many of them who are, uh, didn't have the guidance and the faith like you do and the strength to just go another day. I'm praying that they can reach out to watch this and then maybe reach out to find you and what you're doing with yes, the, yeah, the foundation that you're going to be sharing with us in a minute, but powerful information and real, mm -hmm. real life story. And I'm just praying that it, it will, it will. And I know it will touch many and it will help many through these times where you are, 
uh, can bring light when they're in this darkness in their lives. But uh, right now, I would like to just say mahalo to Steve, your husband, and uh, the Navy SEAL Steve, yourself, and your son for just loving our country and uh, serving our great nation because it's not just Steve serving, it's the wife and the children on the side and in his heart while he's serving that drives him to do a great and better job for our nation. So thank you so much, Andy, Steve, and Austin. We appreciate you and we mahalo you. Thank you. So you have a passion for our veterans and their caregivers because you are <laughs> and will be. So please share your platform, Operation Hero to Heroes, and how that came about. Yeah, I started Operation Heroes to Heroes Foundation because my husband is a veteran and I've had an opportunity to talk and be around a lot of veterans and their caregivers. And we're all caregivers in you know, a sense, whether it's a, a small, something so small or something so big where the spouse, you know, is immobile. They, they can't do anything. So just seeing everything that my husband's gone through for so many years, just being out of the military, um, he, I can go on through many, many stories and just sitting at the, that, the VA hospital that, you know, we have here. And we, we do need a VA hospital in Hawaii and we do need more. And right now we have clinics. So what's happening is our veterans are, they're being part of a failed system. They're not getting the care, the specialized care that they need. Mm -hmm. See, my husband is actually one of them. Just a few months ago in March, he lost feeling from the waist down. He has strength, but he has no feeling. They can't figure out the why. He needs specialized um, doctors to be able to find out the why. But the VA, they're too busy. They can't help. So how many more people that are like my husband that are out there to mm -hmm individual that I saw at the VA throwing up all over the place, going, trying to get to his chemo treatment. And they wouldn't let him in because he wasn't able to wear a mask because he was just vomiting. And so they denied him his chemo treatment. How many more of our veterans are a part of the system that is inadequate because the VA is not putting the doctors in place or the specialized care in place to give these veterans what they need? So Operation Heroes to Heroes came up for that because our veterans need to get the specialized care, whether it's raising money through fundraising to give them the doctors and the treatments that they need and to be able to send them off island where they need. And for the caregivers like myself who are left with the emotional and the financial impact of trying to figure out the why and to understand how to care for their veteran or their loved one when they don't even know what's going on and to how to handle that situation. So that's why I started Operation Heroes to Heroes. And that is why my platform is so important to me because I want to be that doorstop to open the doors, to get in there and say, hey, we need to fix things. As a state, as a nation, we need to start giving more time and attention and putting more money and resources into these. And if you're not, then it's up to programs like Operation Heroes to Heroes, Wounded War and Sail Foundation to pick up the slack where they're dropping the ball. Wow. So um, this Operation Hero to Heroes, is it just here in Hawaii or is it nationwide? So I started it here in Hawaii, but it's global. And I just um, started this foundation this year and I partnered with Give Me a Break Foundation, which is actually in the Windburn Ball here in Hawaii, and their mission is to is the caregivers. So I'm collaborating with them to bring more of our veterans into their organization, um, so their caregivers to be to be able to get the outlets that they need, so they can recharge their batteries to care for their loved ones. Sounds like you, um, like every nonprofit, um, you need a, a grant writer and people mm -hmm. to go fund, uh, find you some funds for this because um, of course, if we were to just say, hey, Mr. President, this is so <laughs> needed, yeah, you know, and um, of course they should fund things like this because if they're not finding the time or the desire to take care of our men and women who served our country, um, that uh, they need to at least fund some of these organizations um, like yourself 
so that you can put your energy more toward getting results for the veterans and their families because Steve is very blessed. He has a family behind him. He has you. A lot of them, they don't have that. Uh, they had it, but they end up with not. And then they're all alone and they can't advocate for themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, your, this operation is so badly needed. And this is also very close and dear to my heart. So uh, I will commit to working with you and seeing what we can do because, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't understand. And yet we have all these other funds, allocated funds that are helping everyone else. And here we are with our men and women and their families and their caregivers. Yes, you need help. You need to get more funding so that your organization can reach out and, and touch more and make more positive differences in the lives of the lives that matter to making America free. And it's so important, so yeah. important. So I hear you and I'm sure we're gonna talk story about this. Even though I just met you, I, I hear your heart and your passion. And I know that God chose the right voice, as sweet as it is, but as powerful and as accomplished as it is in you. So I'm just, just blessed to be a part of this right now. So thank you so much, Andy. <laughs> so, okay, you mentioned you are an instructor and you're very physical and you, you did all these great things to get yourself through, you know, the times when Steve was abroad and uh, on duty. So I know that you're an instructor at the Crocs Center here in Hawaii. How long have you been in this industry and, um, what got you into it and why is it so important for caregivers of loved ones and veterans to focus on their health like you do? Yeah, so I started, I became an instructor about 20 years ago now. So I'm really aging myself, aren't I? <laughs> uh, I always loved running and exercising. It's always been important to me. I played soccer, but being, um, just going through the deployment cycle and everything, I kind of, I got more involved with it because of my aunt Sandy. Um, she was going through chemo treatments for her cancer. And I was there um, in my early twenties, just helping her along and taking her to her appointments. And she had bought me this um, Turbo Jam video from <laughs> Yeah. I want to borrow it. <laughs> yeah, so I fell in love with it, and I actually became a turbo kick instructor after that because I loved it so much, and that's what got it, you know, kicked off. And then from there, I've been teaching boom, that boom. Point. <laughs> Yeah, boom, boom, punch. <laughs> but it was so good, and it was such a, a, you know, a good outlet, you know, just to like sweat, get the endorphins flying, and. So I started teaching at the Croc Center and at other gyms and just seeing, you know, people just going through, you know, and I'm teaching more for them because I'm making a difference in their life because most people like that is their outlet. That is their only me time. And as caregivers, working out and having that physical endurance is so important because it takes a lot of endurance physically and emotionally to care for your loved one. And if you're not caring for yourself through proper nutrition or even getting out there for that walk to have that mental break, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to be as efficient for your loved one as you want to be. Right. So it's so important. And as hard as it might be for caregivers just to say, I need to take 10 minutes for myself yeah. or even 60 seconds just to go and meditate. You have to do that so you can be effective and be able to care for them. And when your spouse, your loved one sees you taking care of themselves, it's amazing when you're healthy and you're feeling good, how much that energizes them to sure. want to feel healthy and good because they're already, you know, sad and yeah. depressed and, you know, so they need something that's just going to give them that extra, you know what, I, I can do this too. And you could possibly be that why on why they can do that too. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And you know, you hit it on the nail too, because um, <clears throat> it's, you are the caregiver and the most, um, <laughs> you know, overlooked, but as a caregiver or even as a wife, as a person, we all need to make sure that we ourselves are happy and healthy. And I, that would be my secret to why I can be so busy is that I always made sure Wendy was happy and healthy yeah. and I, I, I could function at a highest level because when I was down or if a caregiver or a wife or a person is down, how can you look after anyone if you yourself are down? You know, because mm -hmm. you yourself need help. But so you, you got to maintain a healthy body, spirit, and soul, mind, body, and soul. 
and you know keep yourself focused on all the right things that you need to do in your lives that you can like you said it, it can exude into the others your energy will lift them up and energize them and it's the light that we have within that god has placed into our our souls to so that we can um make a positive difference in mm -hmm. our lives for them so it's so so important andy are you still teaching at the croc center um, I am actually. Yeah, I teach every Wednesday and Thursdays in the evening. Okay. And when you have your, you know, your your base, your client base, do you are you able and do you find the time that you can personalize it where when the class is done, you talk story with them and and really just go one on one with encouraging each all the time. Okay. All the That's time so before critical. and after class. And yeah. um, you know, kind of like hairdressers, you know. Yes. There, people sit in the chair of the therapist, you know, that's what we are, you know, as, as instructors too. It's not about us getting a workout. It's about, you know, the patron that's right in front of you because you don't know their story and why they're right there. Wow, that's so critical. And plus you can see the difference in, in movement and uh, level of activity because you're in the front and you're, they're watching you and you're watching them. Mm -hmm. So you're, I mean, like a physiotherapist, you know, you could just see and watch and like, hey, you know, hey, Wendy, I noticed that your arms aren't going up as high and it seems like you look, look a little bit sluggish today. What's going yeah. on? You know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very important role. And I know every every step of your life is a, is purpose. And so continue to focus on that. And I know the rewards shall come back as you just change one person's lives or, or just bring one more smile to one more person. I think this is so critical. I'm excited for you. Thank you. Um, I was wanting to ask you, you know, what are some of the health issues that are most common in, you know, the veterans and their families that you do notice? So um, one of the things that I notice the most, it's, it's the emotional stress that they have. Stress, as we know, is a silent killer. And when individuals are under stress, what happens is they don't eat, they don't sleep. And so to be able to take those mental breaks, it's so critical. Um, even as, you know, the veterans that are going through this, I've noticed that it's the sleeping and it's the eating. And most of us, we can't prepare meals. I mean, I can't even do like a lot of meal planning. That takes like a lot of time. But to be able just to make sure that you, you know, take that time to hydrate, sleep, and to make sure that you have good Food choices in your your house it, it's it's critical and if you are stressed there are so many places like give me the break foundation operation hero to heroes and i can give a list of so many more organizations oh, work out at the croc center oh. and go and go find andy she'll get you back and come out. work out with me come take my cycle <laughs> yeah, classes work out with andy. Right workout, i promise you yes yeah and you'll get more than a workout you'll get a mental dump and a mental stimulation and just love and light yes. And that's what they need to get to these. Yeah, things. and that's what they need. They need that hug. So if you know a caregiver and you or you know a veteran, just hug them, smile, you know, let them know that, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay because it is gonna be okay because there's yeah. me and many other advocates that are in their corner and we're gonna fight so they can be okay. Wow. So then I have to ask you, what resources are there out are there out there for caregivers of loved ones and veterans? to utilize here in, in, in Hawaii? Yes, yeah, so give me a break foundation. I highly recommend to anybody that's a caregiver to anyone to include special needs kids. Um, Wounded Warrior, um, Honor Watch um, Foundation um, is another big one as well as the Navy SEAL Foundation. But for Hawaii, the top two I would say is um, Honor Watch Foundation, Operation Heroes to Heroes, and I'll give you three and give me a break. Okay, and real quickly, are there any upcoming events that people can support? Yes, so on the 23rd, we're gonna be doing a 1.5 mile walk um, at the Windward Mall with Give Me the Break Foundation. So you can go on the link and join my team, Operation Hero to Heroes. It's a $25 suggested donation to walk and join to support this good cause. And um, we're gonna be doing a um, um, Hire a Veterans Day is at the end of the month. So um, that's gonna be down at the Windward Mall too at the Guinea Break location. And we're gonna be doing a Dress for Success and helping veterans that are looking for jobs, you know, get jobs wow. as well. So call me up or I'll call you up and I'll, I'll come out and help. I'll write it down on my schedule. Sounds but, good, I look forward <laughs> to it. 
So Andy, we run out of time for today. I want to just say mahalo to you, Andy, Kevin, for your dynamic uh, journey and inspiring us to take our health back. And once again, mahalo to Steve Kaplan for serving. All of Hawaii would like to wish you, Andy, best of luck in your upcoming pageant in August. And we'll be back everyone in two weeks with taking your health back with Wendy. So mahalo, Andy, mahalo, Steve. Mahalo. And Thank mahalo, you for having Austin. me. Aloha everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.